Michael Bliss, author of Lesbian Fiction. And I'm Hermesis. Thank you for listening to our podcast where we try to talk about our journey in writing and publishing. But we usually get sidetracked by television or our cat. Meow. Welcome to Harper Bliss and Hermesis. Hello everyone, this is episode 11 of Harper Bliss and Her Misses. We're recording this on Saturday, 16 June 2018. So we have to hurry because we have World Cup fever. Well, especially you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I have it. <laughs> I think it's procrastination. Yeah, probably. So it's about 11 a.m. and the first match of the day is at noon. So we have to record this really quickly and we cannot be long-winded because we have to prepare so that we can watch the match. But who are you rooting for? But which match is it now? France versus Australia. Well, I guess I'm going to root... Ooh, it's a tough one, but for Australia, for the underdog, even though I do have French roots, so All if I French were in our hood. if I were just a little bit patriotic, I would you know, root for France, but I don't know. It's very hard to root for France. At this stage, I'm going to root for Australia. If France progresses further and, you know, they're, they're playing Germany or something, then I'll root for France. And, you know, at least Australia can be in this cup because it's the World Cup. It's not like Eurovision. What is Australia doing there? Yeah, well, that is, yeah, that is <laughs> beside the point today. So, how was your week? A bit better than the previous one, I hope? Oh, yeah, it was much better. Oh. I've calmed myself down. Yay. I've calmed my tits. The 40-year drama is subsiding. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, I had to work hard to get over it, but I did. Yay. And I wrote a short story. Yes, which is really good. Mm -hmm. I just read it this morning. It has a twist. Oh, but also, this story... Because I knew I had to write it. Well, I actually was going to write it in a couple of weeks, but I said, well, I might as well do it now. Um, then I can just you know, write Ping B9 in one go. And I had a couple of ideas, but then, I don't know, it didn't really tickle my fancy that much when I actually had to start. And then, I, I don't know, it just came to me. And that is just the most amazing thing when it just comes to you. Yes, and it's definitely, I mean, you can read it. It's, uh, I mean, I can feel it in the story when I read it. It's really good. Oh, thank you. You're back to your best. Oh, I'm I mean, not, not, not that you were ever you know, not your best, but... My true self. It's My true writerly self. <laughs> yes. So, uh, in other news this week, we uh, got a sneak peek at the cover and title of the French translation of The Road to You, which we cannot reveal yet because the publishers are going to, I don't know, announce it in the near future. It should be the near future because it is set to be out not in the not so distant future. So, um, we, I mean, we don't want to say it because I'm not really sure can what you we be can. Any more vain? Anyway. Between now and, you know, not so long, <laughs> Come on, stop it. it'll be out. I mean, the reason why I, I wanted to put this in is because for me, it was a proud moment. I mean, because of my personality, I don't have many proud moments in my life, but this, I, that, was, that one was really thrilling. <laughs> that sounded really dramatic. <laughs> well, I, I have a dramatic personality, yeah. but that, I was I was very pleased with that because, you know, when someone wants to you know, translate your book, and it's it's, a, it. you know, it's an established publisher who you know is publishing something that you wrote. And the the moment it comes out, I'm going to France. Well, I'm going to Paris. I, this this book will not be widely available in France, but I know one shop in Paris where it should be. I'm going to Paris, and I'm gonna go there and look at my book in the shop. Yes, I'll take a picture yes. of you with your book. Yes. Yay. Okay, so that was fun. Yes, and then we're also working on a little project called... An Introduction to Harper Bliss. Which is a bit of a, compula a compilation of all kinds of short stories or series starters yeah. to get people who are not familiar with Harper Bliss yet into the Harper Bliss world. Yeah, and also, I mean, it has like the first episode of French Kissing, the first novella of High Rise, which are available for free on Amazon and everywhere, but 
free is not the same anymore as it used to be. Huh? So I'm going to put this in a package of 99 cents and then see what it does. It's it's a bit of an experiment. Yes, it has really. some, some short stories as well that are like preludes to novels. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like the short story that empire inspired Seasons of Love, for instance, is yeah. going to be there. These are short stories that you can't really get on their own. They're part of anthologies. And, yeah. you know, so we're going to try that out. And so see it'll be a good deal either way. But also the, the goal is to get people to click through and buy. Yes. So we'll see how that goes. It's an experiment. Yes. And also because I, I wanted to release something in June. <laughs> and this is going to be it because I don't have anything else in June. But this is fine, it's a release, huh? Yes. And I will have something early July, um, you know, for a novella in, my, in a new series. So I will have that. So, yeah, so that, that things are coming. That introduction thing that should be out in about 10 days or something like that, right? No, next week. Next week? Well, 22nd of June. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. So okay. next week, get yeah. on it. Yes, yes. Still need to finish the cover. <laughs> Anyway, um, and the, then, I mean, we must say we've been a bit out of our usual routine because we're still doing, we're still um, revising the golf romance. Yes. And, you know, it's it's slow and it takes time and, you know, you are not, you don't have as much time available as usual to do all the things you do. Yes, because usually I'm not writing a book myself, so it does make a bit, really big difference. I'll be happy when this book is off to the editor and I'll I can go so back to, to regular routine. <laughs> Let's have a party. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going away. Yes. We can celebrate. Yes. We send it to the editor on Friday and then we're going away for the weekend. Yeah, birthday weekend with some friends. So we can relax there. Maybe I won't even take my laptop with me. Oh, you're not taking your laptop? Okay. So what else this week? Yeah, no, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to. We'll talk about it in a future yeah. podcast. Because we want to keep it brief. Because last time the camera stopped after about half an hour of recording. Yeah. I think it was telling us you're going too long. So... Uh, what about TV and other entertainment? Yes, I think we should call this entertainment. Well, yes. I have a couple of things. I don't know if we have time for all of well, them. Well, we can ah. be brief about them. Well, I think the first thing is, well, you finished it already, the new Meg Wallitzer book, The Female Persuasion. Yes. And I'm reading it. And I mean, I love Meg Wallitzer. Everything I've read by her, I've loved so much. But this one, I mean, it's not. A, it's definitely well written. I mean, she is an amazing writer, but the story, the book... It's, it's not, not as good, no. but, you know, I think you cannot expect your favorite writer to have, like, the same brilliant book every time. I think it's normal. Like, it's the same thing, with, uh, which is why, you know, I will, I will always keep on reading Meg Wallet's books because I know she's amazing. But, you know, it's not going to be the same amazing thing every time. Well, it's the same. I mean, for you, it's the same as well. Right? Yes. <laughs> you have some books that are better than others. I mean, I love them all, but... I can't say I love them all equally, and well, that's normal. No, I mean, for me it's the same. I think I have a few that are really not that good, but that's just how it goes, and it's part of the process, you know. It's still, I mean, it's quite a good book, but it wasn't as engaging as other... I think it's mainly the characters. Yeah, they that... are extremely... And usually she has very flawed, quite maybe a little bit unlikable characters, but these ones, they're just... It's a bit too much yeah. to the unlikable. Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a problem. Yes. But still, I mean, if you want a good read, I mean, I would still it's not a bad it. read. It's not a bad read, but, but yeah, it's not her best. No. So you have also been reading so many nonfiction books. Like, like I've already read like five this week. <sighs> how, how did you do that? <laughs> well, you know, um, I have this compulsion to um, collect samples of nonfiction books on my Kindle. Like, it's full of it. And, uh, but, all of these books I want to read because, you know, I want to know all of these things, but it's impossible because there are only 24 hours in a day, you know, and I have a lot of television to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I found this app uh, called Blinkist and um, it summarizes books like very, what's the word, succinctly? Succinctly, yes. Succinctly. I never said that word out loud before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then you can know all the things that are in these non-fiction books and you don't have to spend the time reading it. Plus they have an audio app as well. So now it's my habit when I play with the cat, I, ju I, I can read a non-fiction book in the time I play with the cat. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's this, amazing. This is progress. I mean, the summaries, they are very Summarized. basic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's more like to give you a taste of the book so that if you want to delve deeper into the topic, 
you, you need to buy the book because it doesn't it doesn't have the same impact as when you read a full book like you know like my favorite non-fiction book of late deep work by cal newport you would not get the same motivation from just you know getting the blinkest version as from actually reading the book but you know it's good to um do a how do you call it a pre scan to know what's going to be in the book before you spend all your time reading it mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm very happy with that okay I mean, I'm only on the trial version, but I think I'm gonna have to buy it. Okay. So yesterday we went to the cinema, cinema, and we went to see the movie that all the lesbians are talking about, Disobedience. Um, we both read the book a while ago, long and time a ago. long time ago, and we really enjoyed it because we had it in paperback. I remember. No, yeah. this was a long time yes, ago. This was pre Kindle times, probably. Yeah, 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 definitely. So and so we both really loved the book. But what about the movie? Well, <laughs> well, I think if you're going to see this movie, you think, oh, lesbian movie, lesbian movie. But it's not a lesbian movie. I mean, there's two women as main characters, but it's a movie about, you know, Orthodox Judaism and, and the community there and, you know, how it affects women. And f for me, it was very bleak. And I just, I have a thing, I cannot stand bleak movies or series. That's why I don't watch The Handmaid's Tale. I just, I can't bear it, but this was... Where women are oppressed. And yeah, I just, I, I can't take it. This was not on the same scale as The Handmaid's Tale, obviously, you know, but there was just no joy. And of course, you know, the story starts when, you know, the main character's father dies. It's not going to be a joyful story, but there was just, nobody ever smiles. And I, for me, I can't take it. So I didn't enjoy the movie that much, although I think, you know, they were really good in it. And Rachel Wise is quite pretty oh, to look at. She's very hot. But um, oh, the whole thing was just, it was just too depressing for me. And it didn't move me at all. Nothing. And I'm very easy to move. Uh, you can manipulate me into tears like that. But <laughs> That's true. It, it just didn't happen for me. I think the gay movies are so much better than the lesbian movies. Why? Why does it always have to be so dramatic for the lesbians? Yeah. Why can't we have a Call Me By Your Name? Oh, that is my favorite movie ever. <laughs> it is the best movie I've ever seen, but I cried like you know, a lot. <laughs> but I didn't feel manipulated into it. It was genuine. Yeah, no, I, it, yeah I, I enjoyed this obedience, but I, yeah, it's true. It's not, I don't know, I didn't feel that moved by it either, like you say. But it's true. Well, that's quite normal because you only have yes. one emotionally. <laughs> I think you you'd had it already with World Cup fever. Yes, but uh, yeah. So, but it, yeah, I mean, I did, I I, uh, I did not dislike it for sure, and I'm sure a lot of people will really enjoy it. And we, I mean, but Peter we, Bradshaw in The Guardian enjoyed it, which surprised me because you know, he's usually quite bitter. <laughs> he's a bitter old man. <laughs> anyway, we should carry on because uh, yes, we don't want to go over no. thirty minutes. So, what's the topic of the week? You're in charge. Okay, so the topic of the week, um, I think I have titled it Ad The Advantages and Responsibilities of Being an indie, indie Author as it Relates to Financials. Money. Yes. So, but what brought it on is uh, there was this story, this scandal that uh, was in the news recently, uh, this uh, literary agency in New York, a very long established agency, where apparently the accountant had been diverting funds that were, you know, royalties that were meant for authors, to himself and um, you know so authors weren't getting paid the royalties they were due and they were given you know an assortment of reasons and most of them I think believed them or they you know didn't really check Pir piracy <laughs> yeah it said it was because of piracy or you know someone was sick in the family of the accountant or something or the publisher hadn't paid even though the publishers had said that they had paid you know this one of the big authors that was with that agency is Chuck Polonic, I can never, Polaniuk. Polaniuk, Pol, yeah. Anyway, and so he lost a whole lot of money. We've read many of his books, you know, but he's the one who I wrote. I used to like him. He, he's the one who used to, who wrote uh, Fight Club, you know, was made into a big movie as well. But um, so I, I, you know, I've been reading several blog posts and articles about it, and you know, one of them said that um, one of the reasons maybe that these authors didn't really chase the agency for their royalties or you know look further into it is that 
there's this assumption that you cannot make a living from writing. And so, you know, if you, that is what you believe and that is what you think, then you do not expect to be making a whole lot of money. And if you don't get paid a lot, then you don't question it. Even, and because often apparently these, it, it's, it is apparently a not uncommon practice in that agencies do scam their authors. I don't know. We've never de dealt with an it's agency. A, it's human nature. Yeah. But um, often these, the money that gets scammed is from. It's not from you know royalties in the regular market. If it's an American author in the American market, the book shop market or whatever. But it's money that comes from more unexpected sources that that the author you know doesn't really know about. Like if they've sold foreign rights. You know their royalties in Germany; they have no idea what's going to come from there. And so, if money comes into the agency and doesn't get paid to the author, the author usually has no idea that he's missing out on. But it makes me think about you know all these articles about you know how much the average author earns, which is like not a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you know, I mean, if if all their agents scam them, it's no wonder they don't make any money. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. <laughs> So, um, and so, you know, as indie authors, we do not have an agent. So anything that we earn comes directly to us, yeah. um, which is good, of course, because, you know, when you go through an agent, you have to pay the agent their percentage as well. So, you know, you know, as an author, you make far less than if you get paid directly. Um, you have to do far less. Plus, well. they also have publishers. So they, yes. you know, yeah, you have to, of course. But um, so, but the thing about being indie is that you see how much your book actually earns. You don't have to trust reports that you get from a third party, um, where they can you know, manipulate it or uh, whatever and give you false information. And you get to decide what you do with the money as well. You know, you get to decide if you're going to use it for advertising or you know what you're going to use it for. But that means that you also you know you have a responsibility to. To yourself and to your, you know, your family, to be a business person about about your author business and not just an author. Know where the money goes. Yeah, know where it comes from and know where it goes. You have to, you know, and you've been recently you've been doing you've been really keeping track of everything we spend, every little expense, just so to have a better global image of you know of of what we spend and on what we spend it both professionally and you know personally you know any supermarket run but I also any advertisement i should have done this years ago but we were in a bit of a no actually i have no excuse for no. not doing well we before. should have done this more i mean we, we, you know, we do keep i have a detailed list of all our business expenses because you have to do that for your accounts but we never did it in such detail that we also counted everything we spent um you know in our private life so, but it's important to keep track of, of what you spend on your business and what you make on your on your business. And, and make a difference, but know that there's a big difference between what comes in, that what comes in, you know, is not pure profit because there are many expenses. Yes, so what, <laughs> what comes in is your, is, your, is your revenue, but it's not, a, it's not your profit. No, I just want to refer to a blog post that Joanna Penn did on her, on her blog this week, I think, or last week about the difference between, you know, um, because you know you have like Mark Dawson with his income reports all the time, like oh I made hundred thousand uh, US last month, but yeah he did, but he spent like twenty thousand on advertising. Yes, plus his other that's only his advertising expense. He has other expenses as well. So um, not that it's not a lot. No, no, but that's not what he actually keeps at the end of the month. He he doesn't keep a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and like you know we say like we 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 said that we had a six figure year. Mm -hmm. Well, that was yeah, in revenue. That was, that was in revenue. That was not, that in, was profit. not in profit. No. So, um, yeah, so you really have to, you know, be a business person as well as an author. Um, and that goes also for if you want to, you know, find other streams of income, uh, like, you know, sell foreign rights or sell audio rights. Um, you have to do it yourself. And I know there's a lot of authors who say, I, could, I, could, I can't do that myself and I could never have you know my 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 books in uh, in 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 Germany or in Brazil or whatever without an agent I could never have my books in uh, in audio or in that that bookstore without an agent but I think maybe in you know if you're in a mainstream genre maybe for that might be true for some things but I think in Lesvik it's probably very different because you I mean your indie published Lesvik Lesvik book I don't think a mainstream publisher in France or is going to buy the rights to that. 
only a specialized small press will probably be interested in that and they will accept submissions that don't go through an agent they will if you if you do a bit of research and you find out if you if you're interested in selling your foreign rights and you research the language or the country that you would like to sell your rights to you can find a publisher that there are publishers in, in a lot of countries that do translations of, of English language books. Often there are small specialized publishers like we, you know, the, the one that's coming out in French. There, it's a, there, uh, there are uh, a lot of new ones yes. from France. And there's, they, are, they are specialized in less fic for us, but I'm sure in other genres there are other pr publishers as well. And so they do not need an agent to submit, uh, you know, to sell them the foreign rights. You can approach them directly. Um, same for the German rights that you sold. It's also the direct thing, you know. So these are things that you, of course, you know, you have to educate yourself and you have to um, maybe get your contract read by, and by a lawyer if you're not sure if it's, you know, what should be offered and, you know, it's important to gather information if you know other authors who have done it already. May I interject? Of course. I think it's also important to make connections because the world of, the world of Lesvik is so small, this is specifically for Lesvik, but like, you know, Ilva is going to translate some of my novels in German, it's because, you know, I met Astrid, yes. we talked, we got along, you know, I think maybe if I hadn't met her, it would not have happened. No, but like the French publisher, we contacted. I mean, they know that that's not true. Actually, they contacted us to to buy the. Yeah, right? but we contacted the other one yeah, first. So, so I mean, it's it, you can approach these publishers. Yeah, and audio and, publishers as well. Yes. And I know Tantor is looking for Lesvik. Yes, you can. Tantor loves Lesvik. Get you, in touch with them. You don't need to go through an agent. You can. Or you don't have to do it yourself if you don't want to. Yes, because we, for us, audio is like, I mean, we could make more money if we did it ourselves, but we're in Belgium and it's tricky. In the US and UK, it's different. But um, for me, it's just fun to, we don't have to do anything at all for the audio. Just approve the narrator and maybe give some, I mean, we, have, we talk about it with the publisher, but this, it's just extra money. Yes. And all we had to do was ask. Yes. Well. You know, and sometimes they contact you. Yes, but it does. I mean, it doesn't mean, of course, that they're going to accept every submission. But you know, well, they, no, they are open to 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 acquiring new books. So you know, it's worth contacting these these publishers. Yes. So I mean, my you know, in conclusion, I think it's because we it's are, time. Yes. Um, you know, I think it's really important to develop this business mentality as an author if you're an indie author and to really be in control. I mean, it's a, one of the perks of being an indie author, but it's also one of the responsibilities that you have to, you are in control of everything and you are in control keep of your financials and you keep an eye Always on your money. keep an eye on the money. On where it comes and make, if, if, so, if one of the platforms where you're selling hasn't paid you in a while, you know, tr push them and see what, the, what was in the contract and, you know, make sure that you are being paid as you should be. And also keep track of where you spend your money, and this is all part of Excel the package sheets, of the Excel sheets. <laughs> My whole life is run with Excel sheets. Yes, these days it's true, <laughs> and you hate. Yourself. I have so many Excel sheets, but I, d I hate it less because I can understand it a bit more. It's it can do so many things. You can do everything in Excel. I never knew, but did we not want to take a course in Excel? Um, I don't an remember. evening course. No, we took in databases, or I did it in uh, databases. database. Anyway, this is... Because I, I know nothing of Excel, but this is such an amazing tool. It is, it is. Anyway, um, I think that's it for this week. Yes, enjoy the World Cup. Yes, and if on your country is playing, there are only 32 countries in there. Right? On Monday, Belgium is playing. Yay! And then they're, they're playing against the UK as well, against England. Yes, So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay, until <laughs> next week. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to Harper Bliss and Her Misses. You can find all the episodes and show notes at harperblissandhermisses.com. We also have a favor to ask. If you could rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to it, that would help other people find us. Thank, Thank you. you.